Hey everyone, my name's Walter, and I'm back here to bring you more stories from Reddit. This is something I used to do on my old channel that people liked, but I've never done it here. Today we're going to be talking about weeaboos. Weeaboos are those fans of anime and often Japanese culture in general that take it way too far. They get weird about race. They ship their friends. They shout Japanese phrases in public. They wear ahegao sweatshirts. They have body pillows. Well, you get the idea. Let's just begin with weeaboo stories from Reddit Weeaboo Tales. Reddit Weeaboo Tales is, of course, the place to leave your stories about encounters with weebs. And that's where these stories mostly come from. Throwback from high school. Although I'd never learned the term weeaboo until a few years ago, I can definitely recall meeting plenty of people all throughout my life who definitely fit the bill. One of whom was a white girl from my freshman year in high school. Unlike the other creeps in this thread, I actually felt she was pretty sincere about her interest in Japan and Japanese culture, but like everyone else here, took it way too far. We'll call her M. Despite us only being freshmen, M was convinced her calling in life was being a manga artist in Japan. To say she liked manga and anime would be the understatement of the year. She had a pair of cat ears that she'd wear to school, would call people Baka-chan if they annoyed her, and talked about her habit of force-feeding herself fish to get herself to like it when the time came for her to move up to Japan for her future career. This would be fine and all, but what irritated me and a few others was that she had a habit of lecturing Japanese-American students like myself for not being connected to our cultures, and was the biggest pedant when it came to writing out hiragana and such. I remember her flipping out once when she couldn't get the hook on the hiragana character, Ki, once while doing a homework assignment. One day, after she went off on me for not being connected to my roots, I finally had enough and demanded to know why she wasn't learning German, since she was of partial German descent. She was so offended by that, she refused to speak to me for a few days. Yeah, this is what you see in this subreddit. People are really weird about race. They'll be jealous that they're not Japanese and think the Japanese people they know aren't taking it seriously enough. The next one here is actually from Reddit Neckbeard Stories, but it's obviously about a weeaboo. You can't go to Japan. In my school, it was a small school. Everyone knows each other to some degree. There was this one kid who everyone knows and was infamous in the school. He would constantly flirt with girls and would make the girls weirded out by how he would act and what he would say, do nice things for them, and expect a blowjob in return and other stuff like that. The only thing not making me call him a neckbeard is the fact that he is really religious. You do not have to be an atheist to be a neckbeard, by the way. Religion can be pretty neckbeardy, too. He was a total weeb. He would always wear anime shirts, somewhere legit hentai, read manga in the classroom, and took our high school Japanese class so that he could watch anime without reading the subtitles. He failed the class because he didn't take it seriously. Ironic. The few times I was teamed up with him, we talked for a bit about anime and Japan and other stuff like that, but as soon as the conversation turned into anything that wasn't about anime or Japan, he would always respond with, I mean, I guess, to the few times I was teamed up with him for group projects. He told multiple different kids he was Japanese when he was a pure Afghan and would try to speak Japanese but would make himself look stupid. My school was an early college school, and since my school was linked up with a college, once a year during the summer, the school would have a study abroad trip to a different country for college credits. For two weeks for juniors going into their senior year. Some of the past countries were Spain, England, and Iceland. That year, the year I was in, the country on the list was Japan. When they announced the list to everyone, I wanted to go. You had to have requirements met in order for you to go on the trip, such as a certain GPA and cough up the money, Granted, the money you'd cough up would pay for the hotel rooms, travel, etc., so it was worth it. He also wanted to go, but instead of doing anything like trying to get a good grade, he'd skip class and stay in the hallway, watching anime with no headphones on and blast Japanese music. Throughout the whole year, he wouldn't do anything. No helping out with the fundraiser slash fundraising, not doing any work, not even giving any money from what I understand. The list of kids that were picked for going to Japan was selected, and I was on the list. I was ecstatic because I worked my ass off to get in, and it paid off. But he wasn't on that list. When he found out he wasn't selected to go to Japan, he flipped out and had a temper tantrum about how he didn't get selected. To turn his anger out on me and started yelling at the top of his lungs, You can't go to Japan. You probably don't even watch anime. Why are you going to Japan? After the principal pulled him away, I just started laughing because I didn't know what to do. After that, there really isn't much to say, although he still posts about this on his social media to this day after two years went by. Okay, why did he think he was getting the trip to Japan? Just because he visually wanted it the most? Now, why would you ever send someone to Japan who doesn't watch anime? If there's one thing they don't have enough of in Japan, it's people who watch anime, right? 
This next one sounds pretty painful. Some girl in my public speaking class did a whole presentation on her boyfriend from a dating sim. Honestly, I forgot this sub existed for a while, but this memory is literally seared into my brain. I still get secondhand embarrassment just thinking about it. So there was this girl in my public speaking class last year who's one of those weebs that really likes to broadcast it. Lots of anime hoodies and shirts, keychains and stickers of characters, and a backpack made to look like the costume of All Might from My Hero Academia. She was a super senior who switched majors in her fourth year, so I don't know how she managed to afford it all. I'm something of an anime fan myself, so I know it's all probably overpriced as fuck. Once she even came to class in what I think was either a gothic lolita dress or cosplay. It was purple, lacy, and way too small for her. Anyway, our first presentations were pretty chill, just a get-to-know-you exercise so the professor could gauge your skills. Most were pretty boring, I know mine was. I was kind of looking forward to the weirdos in the class just to break the monotony. So homegirl goes up in all her glory, in a cat-eared hoodie with thumb holes. The first few slides were pretty heavy. She went into a lot of personal detail about a death in her family for a presentation to virtual strangers. Once everyone in the class was depressed and slightly uncomfortable, she switched slides from a single photo of her dead relative to a collage of pictures of this one white-haired anime boy. The size of the screen made each full body shot roughly the size of a body pillow, and each headshot the size of a car tire. Before we go any further, I'd like to show you the character she's apparently talking about. Zen from Mystic Messenger. Right. She explained how he was her boyfriend from a dating sim called Mystic Messenger and how she left her real-life boyfriend for him. She launched into this catalog of her ex's various flaws. He didn't appreciate her, didn't support her, was dismissive of her feelings, never took her out on dates, etc. Then she started explaining how much better this fictional character was in every way. He was sweet, he made her feel special, he asked her about her feelings, and on and on. She explained how the game is set up so the characters send texts to your phone, and how she felt more excited to get texts from him than from her IRL boyfriend. She said she had developed actual feelings for this anime boy the more she learned about him because they had so much in common, and he's been through so much, but he's still so kind. She even talked about how she initially went after some other character, but he captured her heart with his mysterious past or whatever. The whole time she was using his name and speaking in the present tense like he was an actual person. About 10 seconds in, I had to look down at my desk and do breathing exercises because I was so embarrassed on her behalf. Everyone else talked about their major, or their service trips, or being a student-athlete, so we were in a class of the most normal people you can get, and they all looked absolutely baffled. Then she dropped the bomb that her ex was from high school, so she'd been virtually dating an anime boy for at least five years. Normally the class clapped after a presentation, but it was dead quiet. The professor said something about appreciating how candid she was, but she was half Japanese and you could see the, holy fuck, are white people really like this, lurking in her eyes. I never thought people like her actually existed outside of basements. It was honestly the most surreal thing I've ever experienced. God, I want to say it's hard to believe, but I keep seeing people who are this bad, and videos of presentations that are this awkward, so I'm not sure why it's so hard to believe anymore. It's believable that someone who made things awkward by beginning with a big tragic event might also be doing something else that's not exactly socially aware. Imagine being the guy whose ex is ranting about how much worse he was than an anime character. There's still time left for one more story though, I think. Weeb tells me I'm racist for not liking anime. When I was in college, I attended a lecture by a Japanese immigrant who talked about the history of Japan and how it influenced the cultural attitude of cleanliness and certain things that are inherently dirty or clean. I specifically found it interesting that there is a certain pair of shoes designated for the bathroom and nowhere else. Anyway, I was discussing what I learned at lunch when my friend Jay's new girlfriend perked up. So you like Japanese culture too? I think it's weird to say you like a culture. I told her I appreciated a lot of aspects about it, and she asked me what my favorite anime was. I told her I didn't care for a lot of anime, and that upset her. She demanded to know why. I said in as polite and inoffensive way as I could that it was too juvenile. The humor in most revolved around silly exaggerated faces, shouting, and overly sexualized scenarios. The dark or gritty anime came off as something an edgy teenager came up with after reading a two-page essay on nihilism. I made sure to say that other people are entitled to enjoying whatever they like, and I wouldn't harass or demean them for it. It's their choice to watch what they want. That was not okay. Not for this chick. You know, it is possible to say you don't watch anime without being that condescending about it. 
I don't think there's anything wrong with saying you like a culture, either. I know, the person probably thinks Japanese culture is anime, which is a bit of a problem. She informed me that anime was a product of the culture, and if I only liked the history of it and not the product of its people, I must be racist. Against a nationality. Now I was kind of pissed off. I told her a lot of anime are obviously culturally watered down to be more palatable for those profitable western markets, and that occasionally showing a character bowing or eating from a bento box isn't cultural respect. It's fodder for the xenophiles that buy Pocky with mommy's grocery money and think it makes them Japanese. Her boyfriend Jay's co-worker is from Ghana and was eating with us. I asked if he liked Spongebob. He said no, and that it was too silly and without substance. I asked her if that made him racist against Americans, lol, and she said that wasn't the same. I told her Spongebob is a very American story about a young guy working low wage in a fast food place for a greedy boss and grouchy co-worker, but also makes time for a stupid friend and kind college-educated girl. She left the table. Good riddance. I don't even know about the analogy here, comparing the whole of anime to a single kid's show. It's like these people are trying to out-ignorate each other or something. Of course it's not racist to not like anime. It's more racist that she equated anime as synonymous with Japanese people and culture. Anyway, that's about all the time I have for you today. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you liked the video, please leave a like. If you have something to say condemning or defending these people, let me hear it in the comments. I'm not always right. Don't quote me on that, though. If you're new here, consider subscribing, because I'm almost to 10,000 subscribers, and we'll see if I can do some sort of a special. Thanks also to my generous patrons. I need to do a shout-out here soon, but they're helping me survive through all the YouTube bullshit. I'm such a sellout. Well, that's about all I have to say today. Watch out for more content in the next few days, though. Have a great day, everyone, and make sure to consume anime responsibly if that's what you're going to do.